Hey guys, this is Prajesh. Today we will see how to process huge amounts of data in parallel using a library called Dask. And I'm going to show you how to implement that as well. Now most of you out there who are working on data science projects using Python would be familiar with the libraries Pandas and NumPy. So we use these libraries for data pre-processing. And many a times, we have faced situations where the data is so huge in GBs and our computer is not able to process the data. And even if we try to process such huge amounts of data, what we see is memory error. Now this is because the computer has run out of the available RAM. And many high level programming languages like Python just use one core for processing, even if the machine has multiple cores or processors. Now let's take an example and see how parallel processing works. I have a list with three elements. Now I want to multiply each of these elements by two. So all these operations are performed sequentially one at a time. And there's just one CPU that does this operation. So the total executed time is three milliseconds. Now if you take the second case, I have the same list with three elements, but the operation happens in a parallel manner. So the total computation for every element happens in different CPUs. So this reduces the overall execution time to just one third and it takes one millisecond to complete the entire operation. So this is where Dask comes in handy. So it makes use of multiple processors and handles the data in parallel. Now most of the time the data is available in the form of a table. So let's see how a Dask data frame can be used. So a Dask data frame is similar to that of a Pandas data frame, but then it divides the entire set of data into several blocks. So every block is in the form of a Pandas data frame. Now let's take an example. So suppose I have a data with 6000 records. So this Dask data frame divides the set of 6000 records into multiple blocks. So this particular partition has the records starting from 0 to 1000. And this is in the form of a pandas data frame. Similarly, the next block has the records starting from 1001 to 2000. And this is another pandas data frame. So when all these panda da pandas data frame are combined, it forms a Dask data frame. So now that we know what a Dask data frame is, let's see how to implement it. Now before we go to the implementation, let's see how to install Dask. So go to Anaconda prompt. And the syntax to install Dask is pip install Dask complete. And when you execute this, Dask will be installed. Now, since I already have Dask installed in my computer, I'm not going to do this. So let's go to the code. Now, once Dask is installed, you need to import the library. And here, since we are dealing with Dask data frames, I'm going to import Dask data frame. And let's import pandas to compare the execution times between pandas and Dask data frame. So the data, the data that I'm going to use here is an online retail data set. And this particular data set has the transactions from 2010 to 11. Now let's import this data using pandas. So it took around 1.28 seconds. Now let's try to import the same data using Dask and it just took 37 milliseconds. So the functionalities of Dask data frame is almost similar to that of Pandas. But if you want to read certain data from Excel file, there isn't any pre-built method for it as such in Pandas. So a Pandas has something called as read underscore Excel where it reads the data from Excel file. But if you want to read the same data in a parallel manner using Dask, then what you can do is you can use a function call using Dask delayed. So you just have to pass the particular function within Dask.delayed. And this will read the data from Excel file in a parallel manner. Now let's read another set of data, which has the transactions for the year 2009 to 10. So the way you append the data is like this. 
So you just have to pass the first data frame and then append the second data frame. So let's check for the number of records. So if you see the count, it has 1 million records and it happened very quickly. Now there's another way to import. So suppose you have many files with the same file name, but it ends with a different year. So the file name is the same here for me, online retail, but then I have a different year for every file. So the first file ended with 2009 to 10. Similarly, the second file ended with 2010 to 11. So there's a simple way to read all the files at a, at a go. And I have read two files and it just took 41.4 milliseconds. Now, if you check the type, this particular file is in the form of a dash data frame. And it has created two partitions. So these are the columns that I have in this file. And these are the data types of those particular columns. So now let's check the first partition. So the first partition has all the records from 2009 to 2010. Similarly, the second partition has the data from 2010 to 11. And as I told you, this object is in the form of a Dask data frame and all the partitions in the Dask data frame are stored as Pandas data frame. Now the way you check the columns is the same as in Pandas. So you just have to type dot columns. It will give you the list of columns. So there's one more thing that you need to know. So there's a function called compute. Now, when you want to perform any operation with the data, Dask builds a graph for all the tasks that you need to do. Now, this compute method processes the result and executes it in parallel. Now, this compute is necessary in case of a Dask. Yeah, so when you want to check the number of columns, the command stays the same. And let's check the data types of all the variables. Now, if you look at the data type of invoice date, it is stored as object, whereas it needs to be date time. Now let's execute this. So the command to convert an object to date time is the same as in pandas. And if you check the data type, now the invoice date column has been converted to date time column. Similarly, if you want to check the frequency distribution for country. So whatever operation you need to perform, you need to end it with a compute method. Yeah. So now you know that we, have, we are executing almost 1 million records and it's happening very quickly. So any operation that you need to perform, you just have to end it with compute. So now I want to check the number of missing values in each of the columns. Yeah. So the customer ID has close to 2,43,000 missing values. And let's group the particular data set by stock code and country. And let's check the average minimum and maximum value of the price for these groups. Yeah, so this happened quickly as well. And you have the result. So the way you compute the correlation is also the same. So I've just picked two variables and I'm looking for the correlation. And the way you drop the missing values is using this function drop in a. So I want to drop all the values where you have at least one missing value. And you can also use Lambda functions. You can use an apply. So I'm just multiplying the values of price by two. All of this happens so quickly. And you can also use filters with dash data frames.
yeah so it give me the result quickly and you if you want to convert a particular data type to a different one so i want to convert the country variable to a category you can do this so the syntax is the same as in pandas and suppose you want to create a dummy variable this is also possible and the syntax remains the same as in pandas you execute this you get the dummy variables so i have a lot of stock codes and for every individual category in the stock code variable it has created a separate variable and if you want to impute the missing values you can do that as well so now that we have seen most of the commands in pandas is the same in task as well 